70% enough solar energy to power millions of homes every year is literally wasted. True story. But we've got the power to fix it. Hello, my pioneers of progress. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Theodore, and today we're going to talk about how ridiculous close we already are to being all electric and what is stopping us. From AI-driven smart grids that promise smarter energy distribution to using farmland for both crops and solar panels, we're on the brink of what once seemed inconceivable. It's all about tackling inefficiencies and building a sustainable system. Buckle up. This is going to be a fascinating, fact-filled feature focused on renewable energy innovations. Hey everyone, and welcome back. We're doing something really cool with this deep dive, going deep into the world of green energy. Definitely deep. But not just, you know, the exciting headlines we see all the time. Right. We want to figure out how to actually make this stuff work, like for everyone on a global scale. Yeah, the practical side of things. Exactly. It's yeah. like, it's great to have a solar powered plane, but not much use if there's nowhere to land it. That's a good analogy for this deep dive reports, actual projects, even some really cool lab research. It's a good mix. It really highlights, I think, this kind of push and pull we're seeing right now. Like the technology is amazing, leaps and bounds, but actually making it work out there in the world. Yeah, making it work. It's like having all these ingredients for an incredible meal. Oh, I like that. But then you open the cupboard and whoops, no oven. Exactly. The infrastructure has got to catch up. Totally. So speaking of ingredients, one of these reports digs into the global effort to do just that with these things called, get this, energy compacts. Okay, yeah, energy compacts. They sound more intimidating than they are. Do they? What are they then? Basically, think of them like big international agreements, but focused on those sustainable development goals everyone's always talking about. Right. It's all about making sure everyone everywhere has access to energy that's, you know, affordable, it's reliable, and of course, sustainable. Got it. So big goals, big promises. But this report also mentions something like, get this, $1.4 trillion globally. That's a lot of zeros. That's, I mean, is that even enough to make a real difference when we're talking about this kind of scale? It's an amazing start, definitely. But here's where the report gets really interesting. Even with all that money, it's still not enough to get energy to every community that needs it. We're still falling short. There are still gaps. Think of it like we're laying down these high-speed rail lines, which is great, mm -hmm. but there are still towns that are miles and miles off the main track. And they're stuck waiting, so it's not enough to just invent the technology. Exactly. We've got to get it where it needs to be. Distribution, access, all of that. Okay. But on the topic of challenges, we were talking about solar and wind power before we started. Right. And this other report, this one from the IEA, paints a kind of worrying picture, like we're actually wasting a ton of renewable energy. Oh, yeah. That's a big one. It's because our energy grids just can't keep up with how much we're generating. I guess that makes sense. We're just producing more than we can use. In a way, yeah. The report says we're wasting an amount of energy that's equal to, wait for it, 480 nuclear reactors. Hold on. 480. Nuclear reactors worth of power. Just gone. That's, wow. Okay, so it's not even as simple as just building more panels and turbines. Nope. We have to upgrade the entire system. So... What are the real-world consequences of that, besides, obviously, the wasted potential? Well, for one, a less reliable grid in general, more blackouts, probably. Makes sense. And then, because demand is higher than what we can handle, energy prices go up. Ugh, that's never fun. Plus, it slows us down on climate goals because we're not even using all the clean energy we're making. It's like having a brand new, super efficient car. I know where you're going with this. But you're stuck in traffic because the roads haven't caught up yet. Ouch. Yeah. Welcome back to The Deep Dive. You mentioned innovations, and we've got information on some of those, which I'm dying to get into. Where do we even begin with tackling this, though? Well, one area that's super promising is materials, specifically wind turbine blades. Ooh, okay. You sent over something about a breakthrough at NRL. Oh, yeah. The recyclable ones? Those are the ones. 
Because right now, most of those blades, they end up where? In landfills, right. Which seems kind of counterproductive when we're talking about clean energy. Huge problem. And this is why NREL's work is so big. They've made a blade using this resin. It's called pecan. Pecan. Okay, I like it. What's so special about pecan? It comes from plants. Yeah. That means it can be broken down, and they can use those materials to make new blades. So, like, over and over again. Exactly. No more giant wind turbine graveyard. It's a big step toward what's called a circular economy for energy. We're trying to move away from that take, make, dispose thing. Makes sense. It's designing stuff from the ground up to be reused as much as possible. I like it. And we're seeing this circular economy idea popping up with solar power too, right? There was that article about a new kind of solar cell. The perovskite ones. Those yeah. are exciting because they could be even more efficient than the silicon ones we use now, but way cheaper. Hold on. Perovskite solar cells. Right. What, even ISS perovskite sounds like something out of Star Trek. It's a mineral, actually, but it's got this crystal structure that's really good at turning sunlight into electricity. Okay, I kind of get it. And these could be, what, 25% more efficient? Potentially, yeah. Yeah. And cheaper, which is huge for getting them out there. Right, because we run into that grid problem again. It's always lurking in the background. We make all this progress, then bam, the grid. Like that annoying speed bump you can never avoid. But the good news is there are people working on that, too. Some really cool innovations. Okay, good. We need those. Yeah, the grid. It's definitely the big challenge, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's like impossible to solve. Well, good. Because we kind of need it to work. We do. And some really smart people are on it. Like, yeah. have you heard about this whole thing with AI and energy grids? A little bit. That first Ignite article mentioned it making these smart grids or something. Yeah, smart grids. It sounds futuristic, but it's getting real. Mm -hmm. Imagine a grid that basically knows what's coming. Knows what's coming. How? Like, it can tell when demand is going to spike, when there's extra power somewhere, and it just, like, routes it around automatically. So instead of having those, what, rolling blackouts they do in some places? Exactly. This would be way more efficient. But what about those other issues, like prices going up, because we can't keep up with how much energy people need? So this is where the AI gets really cool. It can analyze tons of data, mm -hmm. right? So it can help those energy companies make way better decisions. So they're not just guessing like, oh, maybe we'll need a lot of power next Tuesday because it's hot. Nope. More like the AI is crunching all this info, weather patterns, people's usage, everything. And make sure the lights stay on. OK, I'm with you. Yeah. But even with a super smart grid, don't we also have to think about where the energy is coming from in the first place? 100 percent. And this is where it gets even cooler because it's not just about like giant power plants anymore. Right, that agrivoltaics thing, solar panels on farms. That's the one. But it's not as easy as it sounds. That article, the one from Swansea University, they were onto something. Yeah, it's not just plopping down panels wherever there's space. Nope, it's about making them work with the farm, not just be on the farm. Like making sure the crops get the right light too. Didn't they say researchers are making like special tools to figure that out? Yeah, software that figures out, okay, what kind of crops, where's the sun, how do we make this all work together for the farmers and the energy? That's so smart. It's like a win-win. Totally. And we're seeing programs pop up to support this kind of thing. Like the USDA, they've got that PACE program. Right, right. It helps farmers, especially in rural areas, I think. Which is huge. Yeah. Because it's not just a tech problem. It's about getting this stuff everywhere it's needed. Okay, so we've talked about the problems, some cool inventions. But what about money? Is there even enough to actually make this happen? Okay, so this is where it gets a little tricky. On the one hand, you've got announcements like that one from Unisys. Right. I saw that. Utility companies pledging $116 billion every year for grids and renewables. Wow. Okay. That's a lot of zeros. It's a good sign. That means they're taking it seriously. Uh -uh. There's a but. There's yeah. always a but. Right. $116 billion is impressive and everything, but I feel like there's got to be more to it than that. Like money isn't magically going to solve everything, is it? Oh, definitely not. Yeah. Investment's key, sure. But it's only one part of this whole thing. And, you know, that plan is an article you sent over. It really got me thinking about some of the, I guess, less exciting roadblocks we need to think about. Roadblocks? What do you mean? Well, it seems like even when you have the money and everyone's on board with the idea of green energy, projects still get held up. Permits take forever. People get nervous about what it means for their community. It's messy. Oh, right, right. Like, everyone might love the idea of clean energy, but a giant solar farm in their backyard is a different story. Exactly. And that's where I think everyone listening comes in. This isn't just for the scientists and the politicians to figure out. It's on all of us. 
Okay, so what can people actually do? Besides maybe putting solar panels on their roof? For one, stay informed. Keep learning about this stuff. Go beyond the headlines and see what's happening in your own community. Like, are there projects you can support? Or groups pushing for bigger policies? Totally. Even talking to friends and family about this helps. It all adds up. It's kind of that think globally, act locally idea, right? Exactly. Because if we want to make this green energy future a reality, everyone's got to be a part of it. We can't just expect someone else to sort it all out for us. Exactly. It's on all of us. And it makes me think about, you know that line in one of these articles about imagining a world where we could use every single bit of energy out there. Wait, really? Like even, what, a bolt of lightning? Well, maybe not that specifically, but you get the idea. Harnessing solar, wind, hydro, everything. And then using it perfectly so nothing goes to waste. It's a smart grid powered by every source imaginable. It's yeah. a pretty incredible thing to consider, you know? That's a wild thought. So it's not even just replacing fossil fuels. It's like rethinking how we even think about energy. Exactly. It's a huge challenge for sure, but it's also a huge opportunity and we're right in the middle of it. That's a pretty inspiring way to look at it. Well, thank you so much for uh, for diving into all of this with me. This was awesome. Any time. This is what I live for. And to everyone listening, stay curious, keep asking those big questions. Explorers of Tomorrow, that wraps up today's journey. We've seen how AI, agrivoltaics, and crystal-like solar panels are making our world smarter and greener. How long do you think it will take until we're all electric? Leave a comment. Share this episode with a friend who doesn't believe in climate change. Until next time, keep building, keep dreaming, and remember, every big leap starts with a small step. This is Theodore, signing off from the frontier of tomorrow. Tomorrow.